The Lightroom Tone Curve is an extremely powerful but potentially confusing feature. In this video, I'm looking at how and when to use it. You'll find the Tone Curve in the Lightroom Develop module in a dedicated panel. It exists in two forms, but they are quite similar. The first is what we call the Parametric Tone Curve, where we use sliders to adjust the image. This is the one that you can see now. The other is the Point Tone Curve, which I'll cover in another video. By default, the Tone Curve is a straight diagonal line. When you see this, you know the curve doesn't have any effect on the image. Now let's look at how to adjust an image using the Tone Curve. The first method is using the Tone Curve sliders. You can see an example if I move the dark slider to the right. This makes the shadow tones in the image lighter. At the same time, we see the Tone Curve move up above the diagonal position. Moving the Tone Curve up above this line lightens the image, and when we move it down below the line, it darkens it. If you need to reset the Dark slider, double-click on the Dark's title next to the slider, and the slider moves back to the default position. The next way we can adjust the Tone Curve is by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. Remember what I said earlier, if you move the Tone Curve up, we lighten the image, and when we move it down, it darkens it. If we compare this Tone Curve with its default diagonal position, we can see it's above the line in the highlights, and then below it in the shadows. In other words, this adjustment makes the bright areas of the image lighter, and the dark areas darker. If I click and hold down my mouse button on the eye icon, it temporarily hides the Tone Curve adjustment. This is a useful way to check its effect. Then if I want to reset the Tone Curve, I can either double-click on the individual sliders, or I can double-click the Adjust Heading, which resets all the sliders to their default value. The third way to adjust the Tone Curve is by using the Selection tool. This is the small circular icon at the top left of the panel. Click this once to activate it. It then turns light grey and a small pointer appears above and below the circle. Then, when I move my mouse pointer over the image, you can see it changed to show a small crosshair. Place this over the point in the image that you want to adjust, then click and hold the mouse button. This samples the pixels below the cross point, selecting the corresponding region on the tone curve. If I then drag up while still holding the mouse button, it makes that tonal region of the image lighter, and if I drag down, it becomes darker. When I'm happy with the adjustment, I can then release my mouse button. Now notice two things. First, the sliders and tone curve move up and down as I drag with my mouse. This continues until I release the mouse button. But even after releasing the mouse button, I can continue to click and sample other areas of the image, adjusting those tones. The only way to stop this behaviour is to click the sample icon a second time. This deactivates it, and the circle icon goes dark again. Let's reset the adjustments now by double-clicking the Adjust Heading, because there's another important feature to look at. The Tone Curve has four sliders that divide the tones in the image into four regions. These are Shadows, Darks, Lights, and Highlights. Now if you look below the Tone Curve, you can see a strip which is also divided into four regions. These regions correspond to the four sliders. The strip is even shaded to indicate the different tones. The four regions are divided equally, but this may not suit every image you edit. If I click and drag the shadow slider all the way to the left, we can see the effect on the shadow tones. Notice though, it also affects the dark tones to a degree, but not to the same extent. And it doesn't affect any region beyond this. Let's repeat that and do the same thing with the light slider, moving it to the right. Again, we see the same behaviour where the adjustment affects the region slider we're using and the one next to it. Let's reset that, and this time pick the light slider which has a region on either side of it. When I move the slider to the right, we can see it also now affects the regions on either side. This is an important behaviour to remember, as it can help you to better control your adjustments. In this image, most of the tones are in the shadow tonal region. This means that the shadow slider will affect most of the image tones, 
but the dark slider will also be affected. In other words, one slider is now adjusting most of the image tones, which we might not want. Fortunately, there's a feature of the tone curve which gives us better control of this behavior. These three points or levels divide up the tonal range and can be moved. We can use this to divide the dark area of the tonal range for more control. For example, I can click and drag the first marker as far left as possible. When I add my mouse over the marker, you can see that it now has a value of 10. This value is a percentage of white in the tone. So in this example, the tone would be 90% black mixed with 10% white, giving a dark gray tone. Now let's move the next marker to the left until it has a value of 25. I'll then move the final slider to the left and a value of 50. We have now customized the tonal ranges that the four sliders affect. The lights, darks and shadows now control the darkest 50% of the image, whilst the other slider controls the rest. But, because each slider also affects the adjacent tonal range, the light slider will also affect the highlights. Now the tonal range of our image is better divided, let's apply an adjustment. I'll start by darkening the darks region. And I'll then make the lights brighter. This possibly adds too much contrast to the image, which causes large areas to clip to either black or white. If we check the clipping warning indicators above the histogram, you can see that both are indicating clipping. When I move my mouse pointer over the black warning, you can see the pixels that have turned to black highlighted with blue. And if I move my mouse pointer over the highlight clipping indicator, you can see those pixels indicated in red. Now, you might want that effect with a high contrast black and white image like this, but if you feel it's too strong, you can adjust it using the highlights and shadows slider. All I need to do is move the shadow slider to the right and then move the highlight slider left. This produces a less harsh image, but let's check what's clipping. In the highlights, there's some clipping in the reflections, which is what you would expect. But look at the shadows, there's still large areas that have turned to black. I'll click the warning indicator so that it's permanently on. This will help me find what's causing the clipping before I make final changes to the tone curve. If we come down to the post crop vignette in the effects tab, you can see that I've added a vignette to darken the edges. If I hide this effect, we can see that it's causing most of the shadow clipping. Despite this, I don't want to turn it off because I like the effect it has on the image. So instead, I'll come up to the basic panel and fix it using the black slider. As I move that to the right, you can see the clipping is reduced. Once I'm satisfied, I can turn off the clipping warning. And this brings us rather nicely to the question of when do I use the tone curve in my Lightroom workflow? The answer to that is as a finishing adjustment after I've applied my other tonal adjustments. I use it as a tool to tweak and improve almost finished images. But as I'm doing this, I do stay mindful that I might need to apply further adjustments as I needed to in this example. And if you're wondering what the starting image was like, here's the before and after. As you can see, it's quite a transformation, but not quite as dramatic as the image I edited in this next video. I think you'll be shocked when you see what's possible using only Lightroom. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to visit my website for a free landscape photography book. I'll see you soon for another video.